we have to remember that we can't separate human factors from the larger system. The aviation system is designed to serve human purposes. Right? We, right, we want to go from place to place safely. So, and then the airline industry provides that service. Right? Again, has to provide it pr uh, productively and efficiently, as well as safely. So it's not really a separate a area. It's built into the nature of the activity, that these are a variety of human roles at a variety of levels in the aviation system. And we need to coordinate those roles in order to be productive and serve those different purposes, as well as the critical criterion of delivering those services safely. So human factors comes in and reminds us that we can get too captured by the technology. We can be too captured by our past success, that we're very effective at carrying out this activity extremely well and extremely safely. But safety, right, when we think of it in this big system sense, is not about the past and counting the numbers of things or how few bad things happen, but rather points to the future. Right? In the future, we're trying to understand risk before bad things happen. Right? So my line, I like to say, is we're all about creating foresight about the changing shape of risk before any harm occurs. Right? How do we create that foresight that the kinds of risks we face change? Right? And we want to notice those indicators and act before anything negative happens. Now that leads us into what are the trends going on today. Right? And the big trend, of course, is more automated capabilities. We have machines that can do more things by themselves for at least a while. Right? Within a certain scope, they're able to carry out activities autonomously. And we think that by having machines that can be more autonomous, somehow that's going to make the difficulties and challenges of being highly productive and high safety go away or become, become automatic as well. But instead, what happens is the increase in right, delegating more authority to machines to carry out more of the activities in air transportation uh, actually makes the system more complex. Right? There are more parts that are interconnected in, in uh, a more intricate way. The network of relationships becomes more and more like spaghetti. I don't know what spaghetti is in Barcelona, but it's like spaghetti, right? Everything's connected to everything else. And so the issues today are about how we manage, how we understand complexity, how we tame complexity. Right? Why are we getting more complex? Because it allows us to be more productive. We can, right, we can move more airplanes, more passengers, we can do it more efficiently, we can do it under a wider range of conditions. But sometimes things go wrong even though we have more capability and when things go wrong they can quickly cascade into more difficult situations to handle. So we have to be able to synchronize different roles, different people in different roles with different information and different skills in order to come in and help the automation. Right, in order to coordinate and synchronize the activities when things start to deteriorate or when challenges appear. So we start to monitor for challenge, right? recognize when, cha when those challenge events are um, uh, 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 interacting with the boundaries or limits of our machines. So I like to turn it around the other way. People like to think about human factors as saying, oh, we need to understand human limits. And I turn it around the other way and say, no, we need to understand the limits of our machines. We need to understand those limits in the context of serving human purposes to be faster, to be better, to be cheaper all the time, be more productive. But we have that overarching goal of we have to do it safely. Mm -hmm. right? And that means we have to understand the risks of automation, the risks of autonomy. And when you study systems that really, really work well, what do we find over and over again? That critical last element that is the human element that creates safety, that responsible people Right, with information and expertise, step into the breach to make the system work when challenging events occur that weren't thought about in advance or com come in some combination, each of which was thought about individually, right, but when they come together simultaneously represent a much more difficult situation. One of the themes in creating safety is we have to build partnerships. Right? And this event is an example of what it means to build those partnerships. We have partnerships in safety management, frontline operations, researchers who are trying to understand what makes the difference between a system that's just efficient and one that can be efficient, 
it can operate right with new levels of automation and do it at even greater levels of safety. So it's the combination of these different perspectives and the integration of those different perspectives that gives us the potential to continue to advance and to continue to make the future of aviation safety as strong as the past in aviation safety.